So we've heard through a couple of presentations and speeches now the, the potential that sits in this part of Sydney, the potential we have for realising a return that could take care of not just our children but our grandchildren and their children's future. Let's see if I can get this clicker working. It's getting there. No, no, battery. But anyway, much is made of this potential. And well, the slides will catch up to me at some point in time. There we go. Yeah, we've got growing populations. Yeah, Sydney's going to double by the middle of this century. Within this region, we have a green de uh, dream demographic. We have a population significantly younger, under 35, than anywhere else in the state and for the country for that matter, which basically means we have a significant workforce waiting, waiting to be taught, waiting to come through. We've got significant development lands in play. So these lands provide opportunity. The East has had 220 plus years of development and opportunity and it has been an amazing catalyst for the growth of Sydney but there's only so much space there and there's only so much burden that the whole of Sydney can expect can come out of one part. Let's see if this will catch up. There we go. You can do an economic model, you can't use a clicker. How good's that? And as we've heard previously, there is a significant economy in this region. We've got the third largest economy. We have established industries in manufacturing, food, agriculture, health, education, transport and logistics. And they provide great jobs for today. But we've also got a skilling up in the workforce that's taking place. Higher educational attainment is coming through. And so subsequently, we're seeing growth coming in professional services. The tourism sector in its broadest context, digital and the creative arts. These are the factors and these are the areas that are going to drive the innovation in those first lot of jobs but create opportunity more forwardly. However, success rarely comes around by chance. It needs luck, third party belief, support, benefits from relationships and takes advantage of being in the right place at the right time. South West Sydney, with the catalyst of the airport, with the maturing of those town centres, is at the right place at the right time. But as we've talked about, we can't leave it to chance. Creating local jobs, connecting people across those sectors, residential communities, business communities, industrial communities, requires game-changing infrastructure, it needs game-changing vision. It needs city-shaping investments that put down the foundations, not for five, ten years, but for centuries to come. It provides the catalyst for creating jobs and prosperity for all, not just the few. It's our position that the way you're going to achieve that is connecting the North and the South West Growth Corridors in Outer Western Sydney a place that will be home to three and then four million people over the coming decades. A place of 150,000 hectares, 60 kilometres in length between the key points. Or about the size of Greater London or three times the size between Sydney and Parramatta. Scale is massive here and with that, so is the potential. But if we're going to do it, we need to get the mix right. We need to plan right. At the moment, we have the advantage of some forward investors, some movements in small town centres that are coming and developing. We've got some business parks that are in place. And the leaders really, in many regards, have been the health and the education precincts that have invested through that area. They provide a tremendous spine and a catalyst. But what we've also got 
is a community that has to travel between itself 88% of the time by private vehicle. Public transport is stilted through this area. People in this area travel further and longer than anywhere else in Sydney. And the thing is, that's just the commute within their own region. Most of them have to commute further east to take advantage of the economic and job opportunities that our city presents itself today. And while that's made sense historically, because that's where the jobs were, it's unsustainable moving into the future. It's stifling of creativity, it's stifling of productivity, and we'll ultimately see people fleeing our region rather than coming to it and taking advantage of the opportunities. We heard earlier Mike Murdoch talk about average commute times. In Australia, 29, 30 minutes is a rough average. Just in Western Sydney, you can go 45 to 70 minutes to go north to south, depending on the point you're going to. Forget about going further afield. For the average family, this is $22,000 in travel costs. After tax, it'd be great if you could salary sacrifice and get a bit of a kick out of the Commonwealth, but that doesn't happen. I don't know about you, that's a, well, as my wife would describe it, that's two-ish trips to Fiji or a whole lot of trips to one of the worlds up on the Gold Coast or one of our worlds in our own backyard. It's a lot of money for a family that when added with housing and other lifestyle challenges starts to become quite a detriment to people wanting to stay and realise the potential. So what you have is rail, in our opinion, as an economic organising element. Something that can start to agglomerate, something that can start to create and something that can start to drive value. Something that can connect existing job centres and create new ones. Something that can create new town centres to cater for that growth. And as we see it, you've got three clear corridors or areas. You've got the northern corridor, let's call it north of the western line. The southern corridor, which has within it the airport precinct, which we've talked about earlier. This is a region that at the moment, many would say, and I'm one of those, is underdeveloped. It's one that through connectivity will get a catalyst to begin to connect its own workforces with job opportunities. One that provides an opportunity to develop lands that at the moment are starved of roads, starved of attention, and so subsequently starved of investment. The Northern Corridor, as it spans from Penrith, Warrington and beyond over to the business park and over to Rouse Hill, presents a significant landscape for urban renewal. Over the next 50 years, why couldn't it become the Green Square of the West? Why couldn't that transformation that takes advantage of being four or five stops away from a major airport three stops away from getting on the Northwest Rail Link into town to Northwest to Macquarie Park, to multiple job opportunities, why couldn't that start to see us transform what is five of New South Wales' lowest socioeconomic areas? Why can't we make sure that this becomes something that we take people along on the ride of economic prosperity, not bypass them and move them to the fringes? The South, with the airport and beyond, allows us to start to tap into that potential that's being realised in a stilted way through that surge that's coming through Camden and Cameltown and MacArthur. Takes advantage of existing hospitals, precision manufacturing and engineering, global exporters of advanced engineering products and sitting on a supply line that goes both west as well as south and north for our primary production and our freight. So there's many reasons for why you'd go ahead and do this. Economic growth is obviously one of those for why you'd build infrastructure. 
building it for the sake of building it makes no sense and anyone who's been around government long enough knows the Treasury will never let that happen anyway. It needs to propel us forward. It, need us to, it needs to provide that impetus for us to create, catalyse investment, improve access for the disadvantaged, drive business and take advantage of the assets that we have today. So rather than just talking about it at a high level, we thought let's go ahead and take an attempt to understand, well, what could this mean? What is the benefits that could flow if we went ahead and did this? So we looked at two scenarios. The first scenario was simply looking to connect the north and the southwest. The only line it connected to on the east-west line was the western line. Beyond that, it's just simply trying to connect western Sydney to western Sydney. The second basically said, well, that seems like a silly opportunity, recognising job growth is going to happen over time and people still need to connect where the jobs of today are, which are further to the east. So what happens if we can create multiple east-west links to intersect with a north-south link? What if we can create greater labour markets to the east who want to travel west to take advantage of smart jobs, who want to take advantage of working in Liverpool and Cameltown and Penrith and around the airport as they transform and grow into places that the most desirable workers want to be. So construction will have a sugar hit, as it always does. $6 billion worth of economic benefit, 43 to 60,000 workers taking place across quite a significant corridor of work. It's post, as we've heard from Jeff and from others, where the real dividend starts to pay when you get this sort of infrastructure in place. So the capacity to be adding two to 3,000 additional jobs just because of the rail link every year through to 2040, anywhere from $19.6 to $26 billion of additional economic activity being stimulated because all of a sudden we've increased productivity, we've increased connectivity. We've reduced travel times. We've opened up areas where now the Goodmans, the Dexuses of the world can start getting in there and taking advantage of the first state supers. But what happens if we open that up to the labour markets of the inner west and the north shore? Well, then we get a further dividend. Then we, we can get up to 4,000 jobs a year being created, year on year out to 2040 and almost up to $40 billion worth of additional economic activity being created through that period. That's an additional 3 to 4% on the gross state product. I'm pretty sure if we walked into Gladys and offered that to her now, she'd take up arms, embrace, bank it, so probably securitise it and give us a way to take advantage of it right today. And then there's the overall effect that happens for the state. So that's just what's happening in Western Sydney. Over the period, 100 to 150,000 jobs could be created, depending on the scenario, and almost $50 billion of economic activity happening to the corridors that connect through this north-south link and into the airport and beyond. But it doesn't happen without a lot of hard work and a lot of people coming together. We've got to acknowledge that across this corridor, across this land, the parcels are different. The, real, the opportunities are different. Some will be well-placed for industrial, some will be well-placed for residential, some will be great for kicking a football, flying a kite, lying down and watching the clouds go by. So there is no one fit all. So from our perspective, being able to cre create value, share some of that to fund part of this amenity that surrounds this area, as well as driving the development of the infrastructure itself is important. But we need to accept that we're all different. We can't have a blunt instrument that just charges everyone the same amount for an uplift, but not everyone has the same opportunity to realise that uplift. They have different sized blocks, they have different latent conditions on their land, they have different proximity to rail, to road and to established investments. And so from our perspective, a cooperative value approach, one that really tries to understand the opportunities that come from a case-by-case -case understanding of the value that can be contributed is a much more sensible, 
in a more measured way to ensure that we get an integrated land use that is planned and coordinated, as everyone talks about, is one that gets people coming in willingly because they're looking to invest to make that growth for themselves as well as provide everyone else. And the City Deals provides a perfect mechanism, as Jeff's alluded to, for getting not just the three levels of government, but the private sector through MOUs involved and the contributions they want to give, the value they can contribute and the role they can play in realising this vision. Making sure the heavy lifting isn't all being done by one or two individuals and being put across. However, we're going to need to suspend self-interest to make this work. We're going to have to get on to the bigger vision of Sydney, its bigger potential. We're going to have to recognise that some of us are going to have to trade things off for the greater good. But if we all come together to make it work, we could release $50 billion of benefit. And I know some communities out there that would love every cent of it. Thank you.